take it. Fuck yeah. You know what we're talking about. Yes, 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 hello everyone. One, Metal Fan Two Zero here, and today we talk 13 by Black Shabbat. This is the new album from Black Sabbath. Apparently, the al album had leaked about a week before it came out. I mean, I've heard. Of, I mean, last night, my I actually got a message from my friend Ryan. Ryan on Facebook told me about the new Black Sabbath album. And when I heard, first heard about it, when I first heard this song, I was like, "Holy shit!" It sounds it's it's way way awesome, dude. What way awesome, man? Let me tell you, way better than so good. Best thing thing they've done since probably I don't know since the early stuff in the seventies. Now I thought by there was one album that was all. That a lot of people have been waiting a long time to hear, especially especially from hardcore Black Sabbath fans. Fans, because there wasn't an, any new Sabbath. They haven't had a new album out since for that God awful album Forbidden in 1995. After, I mean, after, I mean, the, and before that, I mean, Black Sabbath has actually done a few reunion shows with the original lineup, and the original uh, Untouched Burn album came in two, around 2001. One when they start to do some stuff, but however, it keeps getting on hold because Ozzy Osbourne wanted to do a solo album, solo stuff, and the um, rest of the guys wanted to do other stuff as well. So it kind of, sort of fell out of proportion for a while. So yeah, but it wasn't until I don't know around 2011 when we had the original four four guys: Ozzy Osbourne on lead vocals, Tony Iommi on lead guitar. Uh, Geezer Butler on bass guitar and Bill Ward on the drums. They did a little press conference around November 2011 where they announced a new album, and which they also worked with producer Rick Rubin, who's one of the best best known producers ever. He worked with like Slayer, Slayer, System of a Down, and a bunch of other bands. So, so it was pretty good. But it wasn't until early 2012 when Bill Ward decided that he wasn't going to participate in the reunion due to controversial disputes, which is just bullshit. It just made me a little bit pissed. But during the live shows, they got Tommy Kluftos, Kluftos uh, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but who filled in during the live shows. Now, for this album, he did, Tommy didn't play on this album, they got uh, Brad Wilk, who you guys probably know him as the drummer for Rage Against the Machine. And he does pretty good, but he's not as good as Bill Ward, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not saying that Brad Wilk sucks. I'm just saying saying that it would have been better if, if they had the original four guys just playing on the album. Because that's the song I mean that's just my one major that's just my one major thing my one thing I just have a complaint about. They just had Bill Ward that was been pretty good. But Brad Wolf did a pretty good job on the drums to say. Sort of brought some sort of I don't know, some sort of vibe to it. Yeah, but the song had actually leaked. There was actually a stream on iTunes that I heard. And from what I can tell, it's pre pretty awesome. I can tell Black Sabbath are back. But anyway, enough, enough chit-chatting about this. So I want to talk about the album, of course. The album opens up with a song called Ends the Beginning. Now, I first heard this song, well, I don't know if any of you have seen them when they appeared on CSI Miami, when they played this, sh this song. And it's a very good song, I have to say. Sounds very, very old, very dark and very, very dark and atmospheric type song. Song very, sounding very old school, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, that's a pretty good opener, I have to say. Now, so, so actually, now we get the next song called "God Is Dead," which is probably the first song I've heard from this album. I actually did a track review. It sounds very, um, dark. Very, very slow and at very slow, very, very eerie, eerie how I described them at the track review. So, yeah, I did a track review, just check that out. Next, next song is called Loner. Now, now, Loner itself is a pretty interesting song. It starts off with sort of a very, very creepy laughter from Ozzy. See, the, and it gets into another in your face type song, in my opinion. Yeah, in fact, 
In fact, Ozzy's vocals are sounding a pretty, a pretty big, good, better, I have to say. There we get to the ne next song, is called Nate Geist, which has a bunch of, it starts off with a bunch of different, like a little weird guitar sound, I think. In fact, Tony Iommi's guitar playing sounds, is pretty good on this album, but, um, but the song Nate Geist, I swear to you, um, I don't know if it's just me, I mean, it's just in my opinion, I think it kind of reminds me of Planet Caravan a bit, from Paranoid, in my opinion. I think it's very slow and eerie, very eerie. There's a bunch of, there's a bit of acoustic guitars, I think, and stuff. But yeah, I, I don't know if about you guys, but that's just how I feel, feel, feel for some odd reason. Right, next, next song is called Age of Reason. Now, it starts off with a little drum intro from Brad Wilk. Now, uh, now like I said, I, I, I think Brad Wilk's a good drummer, but I, honestly, I really wish Bill Ward was on this album. If we would have had the original four, that would have been pretty awesome, but that's just my, 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 my opinion about that. I mean, but he's still a good drummer, I have to say. I do like him, and I like Rage Against the Machine, but I I just wish Bill Ward would play drums on this album, but he's a, but he did a pretty good job on, he's a good drummer, and, but the song, the song Age of Reason is a good song. Next song is called Live Forever. Liver, another okay, another pretty good uh, bleh, song. Yeah, yeah. Next song is called "Damage Soul." Now, "Damage Soul" actually has has another instrument that Ozzy plays. Ozzy plays harmonica, which is actually the first time I believe since I believe the first album to have him play harmonica. I think he's a pretty good harmonica player, I have to say. Yeah, last song is called "Dear Father," which is a pretty good way way to end the album, of course. So yeah, yeah, now, 13 itself, now the album, when I heard about, when I heard this album, it's just, I'm just, wow, wow, very impressive, but yeah, I'm just very impressed about what this album, it took a very long time, I thought we were never going to have another Sabbath album, but yeah, it's a great album. But, but I also want to point out there's actually a few more songs, but they're actually bonus tracks. So like there's Methus, Methodemic, Peace of Mind, Paria, Paria, I don't know how you pronounce it, and Nativity, Na Nativity in Black. Not Nativity in Black from the from the first al album, but it's a diff different song, but a t type name, pronunciation or something. Yeah, but anyway. 13, it's a great, it's a cool album, but I just wish we would have had the original four. That's just my main, main gripe, my main, com my one complaint, but yeah. Yeah, but def definitely, I am definitely would recommend you picking this up. It's a fucking amazing album. But it's a great album, I would, just from start to finish, just, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to give 13, by Black Sabbath, a 9.5 out of 10. Later.